How's everybody doing? Welcome to my channel, Changes of the Heart. I am Candice, your gracious host. Uh, today we are going to be doing uh, one of our mini segments, which is going to be talk therapy, where we discuss a variety of topics that I have personally discussed throughout my journey of personal therapy. Um, it'll be different things that I feel were important to my own personal growth, as well as maybe possibly something that could help you along the way. Um, and what we're going to be talking about today is trust. <laughs> um, trust seems like it's one of the biggest factors in any type of relationship, whether that's a business relationship, a romantic involvement, um, even with your children, your family, your peers, uh, affiliations. Trust is kind of the foundation of most relationships. Um, as most of us know that when trust is broken or um, altered or shattered in some type of way that can sometimes make a break relationship, no matter the capacity um, that it may hold in your life. So with trust, I have my notes here, so just bear with me if you see me glancing over here. Um, so with trust, one of the first things that, you know, my therapist asked me was, what is your issue? You know, why, why don't you, you trust or, or what is, what are your, um, I guess, inhibitions about trust? Um, for me, I've just always had this mentality of never really trusting anybody. Like people are people, people fall short. Um, so it's almost better to kind of go in with a, like a one foot in, one foot out type of mentality. Like, yeah, I'm going to show up, but I really already know what the how to lick read. So it's kind of like um, you, it's almost really self-sabotaging and defeating in a sense because you're already going in, in a sense, hoping for the worst. So going through therapy, um, I was the first thing I was asked was who taught you how to trust or how did you learn to trust? Um, the biggest thing for me was that I grew up in a single parent household. So the only real interaction that I had was with my mother. Um, a lot of times we as parents don't realize that if we have um, a lot of unresolved traumas, anxieties, fears, um, any um, any unresolved issues that we haven't dealt with in 10 times out of 10, we pass that on to our children, whether subconsciously or consciously. Um, so a lot of times uh, the trust issues and things that I didn't trust was primarily due to how I had been conditioned to believe that this is how relationships were, to believe that um, this was how people were, that they just couldn't be trusted, that people as a whole just could not be trusted. So if you start with that mentality at a very young age, you kind of grow up through life knowing like, I can never really trust you. No matter how much I love you, no matter how good you are to me, I can never really trust you. And if you're taught that from five up until adulthood, you're literally going through life not really trusting anybody. So that is how I, I learned. Um, it was also um, through a lot of just experiences that I saw other people go through that just made me feel like, you know, people can't be trusted. Even some of your closest friends and family, things that I saw that just it was like, you know, that could never be me. I would never do anybody like that. And and it, it just always kind of reiterated how I felt like that people could not be trusted. Um, but as I've gotten older and I've learned that your reality is a reflection of your internal reality and how you feel about yourself, about your family, about your life and those in it, um, there is reflection of that outside of you. Um, so the more that you hold on to negativity, the more that you hold on to things that really don't serve you, the more that you hold on to things that block you from being able to have normal emotions like trust, because you should be able to trust those around you. You should be able to trust that you have certain securities in life and that there are good people in the world and that there are people that are looking out for your best interests. You should be able to, to go through life and know that there are uh, people, places, and things that you can put your trust in wholeheartedly. So with understanding how I learned how to trust, uh, where the dysfunction came from, um, now as an adult, you see all of these patterns of how you've had broken relationships, um, different circumstances that have happened that have been stemmed from your lack of trust. 
um, not realizing that through this conditioning, through your different experiences, um, it has shaped your perception. Um, so therefore you believe that life is this way and you almost don't see life from any other way um, because of these repetitive experiences, but not realizing these are experiences that you have created based on your own personal mentality. So if you are constantly going into situations saying, I don't trust anybody, then people are going to give you a reason because it, let's just be honest. Let's just be totally honest. I wrote this this point down that I really want to share. Um, when a person states that they don't trust anybody, it's either one of two things. Either you personally can't be trusted or you don't trust yourself. And that's just what it boils down to. You can't be trusted because you may be slick with it. You you might be manipulative. You might be cunning, conniving, uh, doing backwards things. Um, or uh, you don't trust yourself. Well, basically your own personal intuition, your own thought process, making effective decisions and being able to trust yourself and know, okay, I said no, that's what I meant. I trust myself. I trust my decisions. So therefore... Not only do I trust myself, but I therefore trust those around me. See, uh, it's, a, it's an internal reflection of self. And the more that you work on self and, and your internal, your external will reflect that. Um, so work on your own personal trust. Why don't you trust yourself? So start asking yourself uh, personal questions. Like, why don't, why don't I trust myself? When did I start not trusting? What happened? Who made me feel that way? Why do they make me feel that way? Can I forgive that person? Can I forgive myself? You know, start asking yourself various questions. Um, a lot of times projection of you, you know, when you don't trust others is really a projection of yourself. You project your fears and anxieties and, and your traumas off on other people and you either want them to fix it or you want them to take responsibility for it. And that's just not real life. That, that's not, that is not other people's job to fix your shit. And that's just the truth. Um, dealing with any unresolved past issues, traumas, or painful experiences. Uh, that is what therapy is for. And I think the more that we dig into those issues and recognize what they were in our life, making peace with our past, moving forward, staying in the present moment, not living too far in the past, not living too far in the future, just staying right here where we are. Uh, people of like minds engaging with those people that you feel are trustworthy. So who do you trust? You say you don't trust nobody, but there's somebody. There's somebody that you probably can trust somewhere. Um, there, there, there's one person at least. And if you don't have not one person you can trust, you really need to do some personal work. Like I, that's all I can say. You really need to do some personal work because there's got to be at least one person that you're like, okay. I know that this person has my back. So engaging with those people and then trying to meet new people that you feel are trustworthy. Um, learning that there are levels to trust. Um, sometimes people that are just your acquainti acquaintances um, or associates or people that just you see in passing, just that you know through other people are not deserving of the 10th degree of your trust. Sometimes they just need level two because if they if they F it up, then it doesn't even matter. Like, it's just like, OK, I, I really didn't trust you that much anyway. So if you don't give too much of yourself, you don't lose too much of yourself. And that's the biggest thing we got to remember whenever we are giving any form of energy, whether it's trust, love, affection, time, sex, whatever it is, never giving more than what you are actually receiving. Always give that level of reciprocity. Um, being able to, to have discernment to gauge who deserves your full level of trust um, and how and how much to give, you know, knowing how much to give, knowing when is enough enough, knowing when um, has this person broken my trust to where I have nothing else left to give you. Uh, trust is a personal choice because I trust myself. So, you have to know your own personal discernment and you have to know that um, 
that it, it starts with you. It truly, truly starts with you. And the more that you trust yourself, your own beliefs, your own thought processes, um, your own behaviors, your own ideologies, the more that you become convicted within yourself, you will attract people that are on the same wavelength as you. Something that my therapist did tell me uh, was that water sinks to its own level. So basically, wherever you are, that's where you will meet people of the same like minds um, that are able to understand you, you on your on this particular frequency. Um, so anything else? Uh, making better decisions on how and who to trust. So that goes back to discernment as well. Um, not being so giving, um, along with knowing that sometimes you may not be able to trust at all. It might be some situations where you're, you're not able to. You like, I just, I, that's a rat, and I know it. I know it. Like, I know you're a rat. I know you know. No, <laughs> you get nothing. Like sometimes you'll just know, and that's okay too. So, um, questions to ask: um, When and how was your trust broken? I think that goes back to the beginning of our traumas and experiences. Like, what ultimate thing that like forever shattered you to not be able to trust others? What was that one thing? Uh, was it broken promises? Was it abandonment? Was it fear of loss? Did you go through some type of grief or loss process that, that changed the way you felt about life to where you, you don't trust anything? It's not even just people. Like, you don't even trust life. <laughs> like you're just like, I, I, I don't trust anything. Um, how can you build trust? So if you determined... Okay, I don't trust anybody. Um, well, how can you build that? I would say one way is controlling uh, your negative thinking. You're going to have to definitely control the way you think about yourself as well as other people, um, as well as previous experiences. Um, you, you're going to have to let it go. You got to make peace with your past, peace with, peace with previous experiences, forgive yourself as well as forgive other people and move on. Um, that'll probably be the next topic is going to be being forgiveness because I think that's where a lot of this stems from as well. I mean, we, we're building trust, but we also, it, it's being able to, in order to build that trust, we're going to have to let go and release a lot. Um, because a lot of times I feel like you don't trust because you fear something. You're scared of something and you're holding on to some type of anxiety that won't let you trust based on some type of experience that happened to you. So with that, be open to new experiences despite your past. So if you've had some type of traumatic thing that happened, somebody broke your heart and they left you and they ghosted you or whatever, don't hold on to the experience. And I know that may be harder or easier said than done. And initially, it may not be that easy for you to do. Uh, but as you heal and go through your process, continue to let go of the experience, continue to let go of the pain and uh, just allow yourself to be open to newness. Allow yourself to be open to new opportunities and know that that was only a moment in time. That was only that particular experience and that you can recreate and change your particular environment to what you see is best fit for your life at any given time. So let go of the old, prepare for the new, have an open mind to experience new things with new people, places, and things. Uh, positive reinforcement. So do things that help, you know, build that trust. Like sometimes you can do different things to where um, I feel like you have to, you know, if you don't trust anybody, then you got to learn how to trust yourself. So what is it about yourself that you don't trust? Start with you. So start with the little small things mentally that you can do. Change your way of thinking. Uh, challenge yourself to do new things. Uh, meet new people. Learn how to do things that you fear because that's what builds your trust within yourself. If you break past your own fear, 10 times out of 10, you become more trusting of yourself to make better and healthier decisions for you. So once you're able to do that, I feel as though... Um, you will be able to better receive and understand um, your own ability to trust yourself as well as how to perceive and deal with others. 
Um, who do you trust and why? You know, so if there is that person in your life that you do feel like that you can trust, whether that is yourself or someone external to you, uh, why are they trustworthy? Uh, for me, I wrote down credibility. Like that's very important to me. A person that's credible, a person that does what they says they're going to do, a person that is um, timely. You know, time management is very important. Um, also consistency, a person that is consistent, that is actively doing um, uh, progressively moving forward in whatever it is that they do, uh, big or small, um, as well as effective, you know, a person that can execute, not some person, just a person that has a mental capacity to think of things. Um, you can be a visionary, but you're not able to execute and that's a problem. So, um, credibility, consistency, and effectiveness is really important for me uh, to to really value a person and see are they truly trustworthy? Because to me, if you are consistent, and that means your patterns are the same that I know, and that your word is your word is consistent. Um, so you're trustworthy. You do what you say you're gonna do. Your your patterns, your consistency is connected with that. So your actions, your words and your actions are backed as well as your execution of those actions to the, I guess, desired outcome or goal. So which is basically trust, knowing that, you know, I can trust you that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. And that's the biggest thing um, that I think we can learn from these topics is learning where we our trust was broken how it was broken who did it and why the who what when where how why asking yourself those questions um learning how to um push through those experiences kind of transmute that energy into something positive to where you rebuild and you learn how to trust yourself first in order to hopefully be able to trust others um learning what experiences and triggers called you to feel this way and being able to hopefully um, share within yourself as well as others new ways of doing things, um, a new mindset, a new perspective on yourself. So hopefully you can attract uh, new people, places and things to you that allow you to, to fully trust yourself as well as others. Um, and that's going to be about it. So if you want more information, if you want like an extended version of this video, I could go a little bit more in depth. Um, but I think that's a good first start for talk therapy. Um, trust is something that you just truly have to have within yourself. And it does take time. If, if you have been broken and battered in some type of way, it is going to take a minute for you to rebuild. But once you do, um, your life will reflect that. So be confident, be reassured and know that, it you know, it's all a journey. It takes time, but you will get there. I hope this information has been informative to you. My name is Candice. Thank you so much for your time and many blessings to you.